Hi, everybody. It is so good to have you with us tonight on this beautiful Wednesday evening. You know, a lot of times there are all sorts of little technical things that go on. But you know what? The Lord continues. Uh, he doesn't let all of the crazy stuff of our world uh, knock him out of service because he loves us and he's real and he's here tonight. So we invite you to sit back, lift your voices, and join us in these favorite hymns. There's within my heart a melody. Jesus whispers sweet and low. Fear that I am with thee, peace be still. In all of my save and flow. Jesus, 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 sweetest name I know, fills my every longing in my heart, keeps me singing as I go. Jesus, 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 sweetest name I know, fills my every longing, keeps me singing as I go. Father, we just thank you tonight. We thank you that um, even when storms rage around us, we know that we are safe in the palm of your hand. And Father, we just thank you tonight for the opportunity that we have to be here tonight and gather together for those that have joined us online. Father, we just pray that as we uh, continue out through this evening that you would be lifted up and glorified in all that takes place. And we thank you and we praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen and amen. We welcome you here tonight, and we hope that uh, as you uh, view the broadcast either live tonight or in uh, recorded mode uh, in weeks or months to come, I pray that you just sense the sweet spirit of the Lord in this place. Prayer request can be text to 509-309-0958, 509-309-0958, uh, and you can send your comments to our Facebook page right there in that little box below. Just let us know what your requests are, uh, what your thoughts are. If you got a question to ask uh, or you want to be a part of the broadcast, just put that in that little request box right there. Sheltered in a time of storm. Boy, this is an appropriate, appropriate song for right now. The Lord our rock, in Him we hide. Shelter in a time of storm. Secure whatever our ill be tied. A shelter in the time of storm. Oh, Jesus is a rock in a weary land. A weary land. A weary land. Oh, Jesus is a rock in a weary land. A shelter in the time of storm. The raging storms may round us be. A shelter in the time of storm. A shelter in the time of storm. Oh, Jesus is a rock in a weary land. A weary land, a weary land. Oh, Jesus is a rock in a weary land. A shelter in the time of storm. Oh, Jesus is a rock in a weary land. A weary land, a weary land. Oh, Jesus is a rock. In a weary land, a shelter in the time of storm. My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but wholly lean on Jesus' name. On Christ's solid rock I stand.
shall come with trumpet sound. Oh, may I then in him be found, dressed in his righteousness alone, faultless to stand before the throne. On Christ the solid rock I stand, all other ground is sinking sand. prayer even in the toughest of the storms and and Kay you and I've gone through some tough storms in our 40 years of marriage that's why I tell everybody you're a saint you've walked alongside of me and in the midst of turmoil and trial and told her 15 years ago that we're going to step into a, a, a ministry of pastoring a church and we traveled for almost 25 years uh, as evangelists. So settling down to a little town called Walla Walla, Washington was kind of a big step. So are you glad we did that, babe? I am. This is home. <laughs> you don't think you'd like to go back over to Seattle where it rains? Not a chance. <laughs> There's too much traffic and too much other stuff that goes on over there. And, you know, every time we crest the hill at Nine Mile Hill coming back from the west side, <laughs> I see the valley and I see the mountains in the distance and something just wells up inside of me and I say, yep, that's home. Well, just like this song says, come thou fonts, fonts of every blessing, every blessing. Are you thanking God for what he's doing in your life? I know that we're bringing requests to him, but are you thanking him for what he's doing, what he's done in your life? First of all and foremost, saving you and forgiving you of your sins. I invite you to sing this song with us as we join our voices together. Oh, 
for songs of loudest praise, while the hope of endless glory fills my heart with joy and love. Teach me ever to adore Thee. May I still Thy goodness prove. Oh, to grace how great a debtor daily I'm constrained to be. Let that grace now like a fetter bind my wandering heart to thee. Prone to wonder, Lord, I feel thee. Prone to leave the God I love. Here's my heart, oh, take and seal it, seal it for thy courts above. Here's my heart, oh, take and seal it, seal it for thy courts above. You're going to do this song again to me, aren't you? This is such a precious song. And I just talked about, uh, uh, on my encouraging word, the peace that passes understanding in the midst of the challenges. So sing this song with us, and I pray you feel it as Kay and I feel it in our hearts. When peace like a river attendeth my way, when sorrows like sea,
There we go. Now you guys can hear me. It is good that you are with us tonight as we celebrate Seaspiration as Kay and I bring the old hymns, the classics as I like to call them. Uh, our church um, has been hit with this uh, COVID as well uh, last Sunday that we didn't have service here. And so this Wednesday night, uh, Kay is uh, with her mom in Nampa, and we wanted to just do some of the favorites from recorded, pre-recorded services. But tonight I want to just share with you <coughs> from my message on Sunday that I shared. And uh, I love Wednesday nights. I love this time that we can gather and we can share with each other. And so I hope if you're watching, you'll send your prayer requests in and you'll let us know how we can be agreed in prayer for you. If you would remember Pastor Randy and Kelly Rogers, um, they both um, have contracted it. And so uh, Pastor Randy has not been feeling really, really well. And he's got a great nurse in his wife, Kelly, who's been taking care of him. And then we also have Dan and Julie Wooten, uh, who have uh, the same nasty Omicron variant. <coughs> Excuse me. And with um, being able to be home, and uh, we would ask that you would remember them in your prayers as well. Also, Jean... <coughs> Jean and Cheryl Cowles uh, are out with it as well, and we would sure love to have you remember them in your prayers. Um, I believe that prayer and the anointing of oil uh, is, is crucial for us as Christians, and to also follow, as my mama would call it, the, uh, the health um, uh, routine, um, as she said it. <coughs> as for myself... Uh, I am uh, at the tail end of it, and I think I was probably the initiator uh, when it happened uh, about two weeks ago for me. But I wanted to be here tonight with you, and so there might be a couple of lingering coughs and stuff like that that uh, are unavoidable. So with my wife being down in Nampa, honey, I uh, miss you, and I hope that you are doing well and that your mom is doing well as we get ready to celebrate the life of a lone church in February, and uh, what a great guy, what a great fellow he was. I've learned so much in the 20 years that he was married to uh, Kay's mom, and I learned so much from uh, Kay's daddy, and they were married almost 50 years, so 70 years, uh, uh, and with alone being married almost 30 years, uh, goodness, that's between the two of them, you know, uh, 100 100 years of marriage, 110 years of marriage, and so there's a lot of wisdom there. So let's just kind of take a look. Uh, Brianna has uh, uh, gotten me some birthdays, famous birthdays today, and uh, one that was January the 12th. Um, she's an American actress, producer, model, television personality, uh, was in The Love Boat. I remember when that series was on. It was the turn of the century. Uh, her breakout role was as Rebecca Howe in the NBC sitcom Cheers, and believe it or not, she received an Emmy Award and a Golden Globe in 1991 for that role, and there she is today. Just a little bit of difference as we age. I mean, I look at the picture of me when I, I uh, first married Kehlani, and I had a whole ton of hair. It seems to disappear for some reason. Well, our next famous birthday... Uh, is a gentleman, he's American radio and television personality. Don't necessarily agree with his show or some of the things that he has on his show, but he's a comedian, and he's an author, and he's best known for his radio show. Anybody got an idea? Howard Stern. That is Howard Stern, born January 12th, 1954. So that makes him about 67 years old uh, today. Uh, the Howard Stern Show, which gained popularity when it was nationally syndicated on terrestrial radio from 1986 to 2005, and he has broadcast on Sirius XM satellite radio since 2006. So, um, for all of you uh, in our congregation, you are my famous birthdays today. These other people, I'm glad that they are famous, and I'm glad it's their birthdays, uh, but I don't know them. Uh, but I do know you who are in our church, and uh, if you had a birthday uh, this last week, 
Uh, may I wish you a very, very happy birthday. And I hope that you are doing well. And I hope that you uh, had, a, had a wonderful birthday. And it's hard to say you got everything you want because how do you get everything you want when you've already got everything you want? Uh, everything that you need. And we are so blessed, are we not? So let me wish you all a very happy birthday. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, God bless you. Happy birthday to you. Love you guys, and I thank you so much for your prayers and your uh, words of encouragement, your text, um, your phone calls. Um, this is a crazy, crazy, crazy time to be um, sick. And so, well, let's take a look and say uh, today in history. Let's see. Uh, oh, there's Howard Stern, what he looks like today. He looks a little different than that young guy who started out back there. So, Howard Stern. So, today in history, let's see what we've got. Okay, January 12th, 1904. January 12th, 1904. Okay, well, it's an automobile, we know that. And um, there was something that was set by Henry Ford. Okay, I just gave it away. It's the Ford Mobile. And he set a land speed record of 91 miles per hour uh, on the frozen surface of Michigan Lake, Lake St. Clair. He was driving, so Ford actually was driving, uh, a four-wheel vehicle dubbed the 999 with a wooden chassis, but no body and no hood. So there you have it, 1904 set land speed records, 91.37 miles per hour. There he is, Henry Ford. Uh, that was a few years later, but that vehicle, 91 miles per hour. Okay, today in history, uh, let's see what we got. A catastrophic magnitude 7.0 earthquake struck Haiti at 1653 local time on Tuesday, January 12th, 2010. I remember that the epicenter was near the town of Lagain Quest Department, approximately 25 kilometers west of Port-au-Prince, Haiti's capital. By, 20, by January 24th, at least 52 aftershocks measuring 4.5 or greater had been recorded. And the human toll was horrific, the report says, it remains incalculable. Some estimates that the number of deaths around 40 to 50,000, while the Haitian government estimated that over 316,000 people died. By all authorities' knowledge, the death toll is impossible to truly count. Something approaching one million people were displaced. So 2010, that horrific earthquake took place um, in Haiti. Well, uh, you know, I love, <coughs> I love this time that we can share with each other. Um, and sometimes uh, with this uh, whole cold and everything that I've got, it makes it a little bit difficult to remain seated. So if you bear with me, I might be standing a little bit tonight. Um, I shared in the scripture from Ephesians 4, 17 through 24. Ephesians 4, 17 through 24. And, and if you know me, well, you know that I believe that change comes about in our lives. Um, change comes about in our lives that allows us to, um, w the terminology is called sanctification. Um, and it's a process where we, uh, we change, we grow, we become, um, become, become more of what God wants us to become. And so we have to put off the old man and put on the new man. And Ephesians 4, 17, 24 says, so I tell you this. And insist on it in the Lord that you must no longer live as the Gentiles do. In this futility of their thinking. They're darkened in their understanding and separated from the life of God. Because of the ignorance that is in them due to the hardening of their hearts. And I think that's what's taking place today in our world. Hearts are being hardened. David sinned, but God knew his heart. And so he... He, he was able to forgive David, and David was be able to continue on as a man after God's own heart. But in today's society, our hearts become hardened, don't they? they we take on the, the, the pres presence of the world and what the world expects of us. 
uh, not what we as Christians should expect of ourselves by the leading of the Holy Spirit. Having lost all sensitivity, does that sound like today? They've given themselves over to sensuality so as to indulge in every kind of impurity. And they are full of greed. Clear back then, as this is being written, applies also today to us. That however is not the way of life that we've learned. We've not learned this way of life. When we heard about Christ and were taught in him in accordance with the truth that is in Jesus, you were taught with regard to your formal way of life to put off that old self, which is being corrupted by its deceitful desires. See, that old man has to die. That old man has to leave. That old man, um, because um, in, uh, I believe it's in uh, Second Corinthians, it said, uh, the old man is gone and the new has come. Um, putting on that new person, not going back, not looking back like Lot's wife. When she looked back, at where she had been, she turned into a pillar of salt. We can't look back. We can't dream back of when we, we were doing the things that we shouldn't do. Uh, we've got to forget that old man and move on. But on that, build on that. Build from that old man, knowing that the things that that old man, that old person, that uh, sinful nature did, um, prepares us to be able to identify and see what's coming at us and to say no. And to say I, that, that was my old self and I don't have to uh, do the same things that I did before. You know, that could be anything from looking at things on the internet to listening to uh, watching movies that we shouldn't watch to uh, music. I, I cannot, I absolutely cannot get on the internet. Like let's say I'm, I'm, I'm watching a little video from... Uh, um, uh, well, uh, Facebook, you know, they have those little clips and, and um, uh, I, I enjoy watching some of the boxing ones and, uh, and some of the uh, martial arts ones. But oh my goodness, sandwiched in in the midst of those are just the filthiest things and the language um, that is so offensive. I mean, I can't, I, I can't click it off fast enough, but also my spirit is saying, you know what, I know you like to watch the wrestling and the fight and the stuff like that, but it probably would be better if you didn't because the other th things are going to try to infect you. And so we have to identify those things uh, that can take us down a wrong path. Um, to be made new in the attitude of your minds. The, the mind is a huge thing. Uh, it's, a, it's, a, uh, it's a terrible thing to waste. Remember that commercial, the mind is a terrible thing to waste. God has given us a great... Uh, an ability to um, to know and see and understand and have wisdom and to acknowledge. And we can't just become complacent and we can't be deceived by what the world wants to make us think is normal. Because it's not normal. Where God clearly tells us it's not normal. Things are an abomination to the Lord. And if we're reading the scriptures then they'll take root in our heart, we'll understand it, and it'll change us from the inside out. It'll make us new creatures in Christ. So this, this scripture really hits home to be made new in the attitude of our minds and to put on the new self created to be like God in true righteousness and holiness. Isn't it interesting how... The world, when they hear about religion, tries to attack us and tries to tell us that, well, you're just religious. Let me tell you something. It's relationship with Jesus Christ. I don't know about these other religions, uh, but, but my Lord and Savior uh, tells me I can have a relationship with God Almighty through, through Jesus Christ. And I, I believe that. And you say, well, why do you believe that? Because I believe the word of God. Well, that is the first problem the world says. We don't believe the world or the Bible. And I have to come back to them and I go, well, there's a big problem right there. Because if you don't understand your basic instructions before leaving earth, your manual, uh, how are you going to understand? You're, just, you're going along with what men say and what people think uh, and say is right. But we as Christians, as the scripture says, 
put off that old nature, get into the word, so the word can get into us, so that we have some armor on, and so we have a sword to fight with, and so that we can stand firm and know who we are in Christ. He used a story about uh, Greg Boyle. Greg Boyle, they called him G-Dog, and uh, this was a man who could have pastored a church anywhere, who could have done quite well, and he felt God called him into the inner city of Los Angeles. Um, he went into the neighborhoods of East Los Angeles with the gospel of Jesus Christ. Okay, now he's a white guy going into East Los Angeles, and he really was putting his life in the hands of the people that he was talking to. And every day, <coughs> excuse me, every day, the story goes, he waded into the danger zone of connecting with young men and women who have long arrest and prison records. He shares the good news of Jesus with them and calls them to break with the wicked life that they've known and trust Jesus Christ for salvation. I wonder how many men and women would have the guts to go down into L.A. and to confront young men and women about Jesus Christ. I know there are many mission fields. My daughter went to Los Angeles um, and um, she worked in a um, uh, converted hospital that was able to minister to the street people. But Greg, Je Greg just went down himself and started ministering. The message is simple, he said, and it's real. You can have a future or you can have a funeral. He says, Jesus will forgive your sins, wash your past clean in the eyes of God, and give you a hope and a future. He just, he told them the way it was. You can either have a future or you can have a funeral. You keep living like this, and what will you accomplish? What will you achieve in the short time that your life exists? The story says, to date, this ministry has seen thousands leave the pseudo-family of the gang for the real family of God by faith in Jesus Christ. It says, not because Boyle has watered down the gospel, in fact, he makes plain that Jesus is calling them to radically break all the destructive, sin-inducing ties to their former life. It says, thousands of ex-gang members have trusted Christ taken steps in a new direction with the guidance and help of Greg, and they, they have to learn a new language, buy new clothes, learn how to make an honest day's wage. <coughs> that story came out of, of USA Today. And <coughs> guys and gals, are we making a difference in the lives of the people that we come in contact with? People can say, uh, well, you know, I, I go to church on Sunday, uh, I'm involved on Wednesday nights. I, uh, I work with the youth or I work with the soup kitchen. Or I, My question is, is are we just doing something um, to occupy time, fill space? Or are we making a difference in somebody's life for eternity? Are we sharing with them the gospel? And I, I've asked the congregation this many times. When was the last time you shared the gospel of Jesus Christ with somebody? When was the last time that you told your story of why you accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? And when was the last time you gave somebody the opportunity to pray a prayer of salvation and ask Jesus to come into their heart? Uh, I, I, I've had a lot of people who, who, you know, Pastor, you made me really think. I mean, I haven't. Okay, then what we need to do is we need to uh, start looking at how we are speaking to people, um, how we are letting the love of Christ pass right past them? Or are we taking it serious like Greg Boyle and making it our life's mission to say, I got to tell somebody. I got to tell somebody. got to tell somebody about Jesus and what he's done for me. The Bible says a true Christian will undergo a metamorphosis, a change, a metamorphosis, a thing that you will change from the inside out. A change of nature that renovates the core values and imprints Christ's character 
on your inner world. I want to say that one more time. It changes our nature that renovates the core values and imprints Christ's character on our inner world. Change from the inside out. One more is a change of the radical on the inside and definitely shows itself in the behavior of the outside and how we speak to one another, how we treat one another, how we love one another, how we walk with one another, how we live with one another, how we do life with one another. You see, it's very important that the, the inward change is expressed in the outward lifestyle. Romans 2.6 says that when you turn, when your turn comes to stand alone before the living God, he will render to each one according to his works. The evidence that we are truly born again will be demonstrated in the most obvious and irrefutable of ways. What we did and what we didn't do. What will be the legacy that you leave? What will, what will people say about you uh, when your life has come to a close? Um, what, will, what will your story be? Will you have been a good man, a good woman? Uh, will you have been a good father? Will you have been a good mom? Um, will you have uh, been a good businessman? One of the things in the legacy that I pray is he loved Jesus with all of his heart. And he made it his life's mission to tell as many people about the saving grace of Jesus as is possible. So we find all sorts of different ways to do that. Sunday mornings, Wednesday nights, our internet ministry, our outreach through the Gospel According to Scrooge, Wonderful Life, our Sunday morning uh, Easter sunrise service in the park. Um, our, our Christmas specials, our outreach, our soup kitchen, uh, our emergency warming shelter. Um, you see, if this building is not being used at all times during the week, then, then I feel it's just wasted space. And I think we need to make sure that um, the gospel is going out in every possible way that it possibly can. And so the legacy is, is that he tried to share the love of Jesus with as many people as possible with every means that were possible to do so. See, our deeds are the infallible sign of what fills our hearts. Isn't that true? Our deeds are the infallible sign of what fills our heart. Jesus told a band of guys that were standing next to him in Matthew 12, 33, out of the overflow of the heart, the mouth speaks. <coughs> so when I start hearing these people use foul language and cussing up a storm and and uh, railing on somebody, and, and at the overflow of the heart, the mouth speaks. See, a person can fake their true identity for a while, but in time, it'll leak out what is really inside. You think about that. We can fake it for a long time, but what will leak out is really what's inside. So the change God brings about in us is pervasive and common to every true believer. We must be changing. We must be uh, coming uh, stronger in our faith, more knowledgeable in who we are, walking as a saint, saying, oh, well, I'm definitely not a saint. Pastor, you're definitely not a saint. No, we all are saints when we become Christians, when we accept Christ. Uh, that old nature tries to rob us of that being a saint. <coughs> Excuse me. But the power of the Holy Spirit can keep the enemy from robbing and stealing and plundering and destroying. That's why I believe God gave us the Holy Spirit. 1 John 2, 3-4 through 4 says, By this we know that we have come to know him. If we keep his commandments, there you go. If we keep his commandments, whoever says, I know him, but does not keep his commandments is a liar. And the truth is not in him. There's a new room 
in the lives of believers. That room is, is that they obey God. They obey God. 1 John 2, 5 through 6 says, By this we may know that we are in him. Whoever says he abides in him ought to walk in the same way in which he walked. So as, as true Christians, as real Christians, we have to walk as Jesus walked. Now, I am not saying that we're going to become messiahs. We're not going to become um, uh, Christ-like. But the reflection of Jesus in us, the reflection of Christ, the image of Christ, should be able to be seen in us. And the, the world is going to try to get us to get angry and upset and irritated and say all manner of things. But greater <clears throat> is he that dwells within our hearts than the enemy that lives in this world. So whoever says he abides in him ought to walk in the same way in which Christ walked. And at John, 1 John 2.15 says, If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. It's pretty strong. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. Or 1 John 3, 9 through 10, No one born of God makes a practice of sinning. Ooh, doesn't get much plainer than that. Anybody, anybody that says, no one, no one of God makes a practice of sinning. Anyone can sin. Let me, let me tell you that. Anybody can sin. But no one born of God makes a practice of sinning. For God's seed abides in him, and he cannot keep on sinning. You know why? Because the Holy Spirit convicts him. The Holy Spirit brings about the change. The Holy Spirit takes that time takes that time that is spent in the garbage of this world and starts helping us to realize that that old person is gone and the new has come. And there's a metamorphosis that comes about. There's a change that comes about. And we, we shouldn't fight that. We shouldn't say, well, that, that's, uh, I, I still have those desires. I still have those thoughts. I still have them. <coughs> then in the name of Jesus, by the power of the Holy Spirit... Say no to that, because you're a new creature in Christ, and anybody can go out and do that stuff, but you're a child of God. And God is saying, enough is enough. I've given you the Holy Spirit now. Walk there in it, and allow my spirit to shine forth through you. By this, it is evident who are the children of God and who are the children of the devil. Whoever does not practice righteousness is not of God nor is the one who does not love his brother. Now, let me, let me just emphasize this. Say, so, well, I accepted Jesus as my Lord and Savior, and, and, and I'm born again, and I love the Lord with all of my heart, but, but I, I, I still sin. Um, and it says, who are the children of God? It's evident by our actions. And so I think that's why the Holy Spirit's been given to us to remind us who we are in Christ. To remind us where we've come from, not to dwell back on that past, but remind us where we've come from, who we are, and who we are becoming in this sanctification, in this change process, so that we look back on that old life and we say, I thank God I'm not where I was. And I praise God for where I'm at. And I'm excited to see what God has for me in the future, as I grow in this faith and in this walk as a man or woman of God. We got to keep our eye on the target, guys and gals. That is key. We got to keep our eyes on the target. And what is that target? It's Christ likeness. It's Christ-likeness. And as I shared with the congregation this last Sunday, I, I get pretty passionate about this because the Lord reminds me there's times when I'm not Christ-like. I don't have that Christ-likeness in me. And believe it or not, as quiet and shy and withdrawn as I am, there are times when I can get pushed up against the wall and there's nowhere else to, to, there's nothing else to do but come out swinging. And i got to say, spiritually speaking, not, not beat somebody up or not you know, uh, get in something, but, but enough is enough when people start, continue talking about religion and, and 
uh, the, the organized religion and all this stuff and the church, and I don't want anything to do with it, and, and all you guys are all alike. No, we're not. See, the world is all alike. The world continues to do that stuff. But we as Christians are constantly changing, constantly changing, becoming more Christ-like. Ephesians 4, 17 through 20, uh, 20, 20 says, Therefore I say this and testify to the Lord, you should no longer walk as the Gentiles walk. Well, <coughs> excuse me, we are Gentiles here that, you know, in the United States. I mean, there are Jewish and there are Arab and there are, but I mean, for me, I'm a Gentile. And so it says Gentiles in a general word referring to pagans. And before I accepted Jesus Christ, before you accepted Jesus Christ, you were a pagan. You were lost. You were not a child of God. Well, I've gotten some looks when I've said that. You, God created you. But you did not become a child of God until you asked Jesus to come into your heart. Because the scripture tells us that no man comes to the Father except by the Son. And you must be born again. Believing in God and his Son and the Holy Spirit. That trinity that is at work within you. And it takes residency in you. And so, <coughs> we are to no longer walk as Gentiles walk. <coughs> Your life must no longer resemble those who are still in their sin and without God. They are darkened in their understanding, excluded from the life of God because of the ignorance that is in them. We don't have to be ignorant. The word of God can come to light and take root in us and shine that light upon that darkness. They're darkened in their understanding, excluded from the life of God because of the ignorance that is in them and because of the hardness in their hearts, they become callous and gave themselves over to the promiscuity for the practice of every kind of impurity with a desire for more and more. But that is not how you learned about the Messiah. He said, turn from those things. Walk away and I will give you a helper Holy Spirit will teach you and guide you and direct you and instruct you and give you peace that passes all understanding. And I would rather have that than try to fight my way and claw my way in this world, climbing over the backs and the heads of the people in order to get ahead. God's called me to pastor a church. Now, there are many ministries that come out of our church. God's called me to pastor a church and to share the gospel of Jesus Christ and to raise up an army of believers to go out and to make a difference. The message tells us clearly that we are to cut, cut all ties to our former life. Verse 21, you were taught in him as the truth is in Jesus to put off your old self which belongs to your former manner of life and is corrupt through deceitful desires. This phrase, put off, describes a decisive moment. It's not a gradual decision. It's not a gradual decision. It's not a negotiation. This is the end. The verb literally means to strip off as you would filthy clothing. And in this verse, what's removed and laid aside is your old self, the you you were before Jesus Christ saved you. We don't go back and pick that up. Boy, the enemy wants us to try. He throws it out there and says, oh, remember this, remember that. And his minions know our weak spots. But we are to not pick up those old clothing, that old clothing again. Cut the root. Throw it away. Don't go to those websites anymore. Throw away those magazines. Don't buy anymore. Don't hang out with those people that keep you doing things you know are wrong. Boy, don't we get tempted? Don't we get tempted? Oh, it won't hurt. It's okay to look. It's all right. No, no problem. We do, and you get sucked back into the muck. And you go, how in the world could I get back in here when I know the truth, and the truth has set me free, and I set it aside and go back into the filth? So cutting all ties to our former life. I used a story about St. Augustine. 
this story of a man who, as the, the world would classify him as being a, a reprobate. St. Augustine was a reprobate? Yes, he was. He was the worst of worst. And he had grown up, you know, hearing about the word, but he made a choice to walk away, cut all ties uh, with the church, with the Lord, with the word of God. And you know why that was? Because the word of God wasn't in him. He didn't understand the word of God. And so he was deceived by the enemy. And the story goes, greatest theologian in history was Augustine, who was saved out of an immoral, debauched lifestyle. Before his conversion, he had a mistress named Claudia. Shortly after he found Christ, uh, Claudia saw him walking in the streets. I know this story well. Saw him walking in the streets and started crying out to him and said, Augustine, Augustine, it's Claudia, it's Claudia. And he recognized the voice. But he turned and he walked up to her and said, you may be Claudia, but I am not Augustine any longer. And walked away. The life change that came about in this man, uh, who became a great theologian, and however you want to look at it within the Catholic Church, within, the word of God was in his heart. And you can see men of God, women of God, um, who have been a part of, oh, quote, quote, the Catholic Church, uh, but they love the Lord with all their heart. He has, he has changed them. Uh, I can't help, just like within our church, I have people who come, go away from the church and say, well, I don't like that church, or I don't like that pastor, or I don't like, you know, uh, he said this, or he said that. And so uh, immediately people, you know, who are friends with him, so, well, New Beginnings Chapel is not a very good church. You know, well, Catholic Church got the same rap. And people uh, would say this, they did things, they, and, and I'm not saying... You know, there weren't things that were done from the Catholic Church. But it's, a, it's, a, it's not the church that saves you, guys and gals. New Beginnings doesn't save you. Catholic Church doesn't save you. It's Jesus Christ who saves you. Your relationship with Jesus and how you walk with him every day and talk with him as good friends, the song says, should and do. And then the final one is being renewed in our mind and be renewed in the spirit of your mind. This is the present tense. The present tense. It means an ongoing progressive shift is happening in the capacity of the mind to spiritually discern the options and decisions with which we're faced. Being renewed in the spirit of our mind means a new, never-before way of thinking is taking root. The spirit of your mind is something like the ability to sense the dirt hidden in an area or opportunity before it attaches itself to our life. That's what I've said so many times is identifying, identifying it before it attaches itself to you, before it grabs you, before you look and you go, how did I get here? And we are able to identify it as men and women of God and turn away from it. Romans 12, 2 says, Do not be conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the what? Come on, say it with me. The renewing of your mind. The renewing of your mind, that by testing you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. See, the mind renewal is a deep spiritual change in how the mind assesses and values things. It acts like an early warning system. It, it, it alerts us. It lets us know you've been here before. You know the danger of the rocks on the reef. That's why they put lighthouses up to warn the ships. Don't come over here by this lighthouse. It may look real pretty, but it's going to draw you to your death. Go the other way. Go down through the channel. And so that's what the Holy Spirit does as well. 2 Corinthians 3.18 says, And we all, with unveiled face, beholding the glory of the Lord, are being transformed into the same image from one degree of glory to another. For this comes from the Lord, <coughs> who is the Spirit. The Lord, <coughs> who is the Spirit. See, I don't need Mother Mary. I don't need Augustine. I don't need 
Matthew, Mark, Luke, or John. I don't need a, a, a rosary. Um, I don't need a priest to give me last rites. What I need is Jesus Christ. What I need is a relationship with Jesus Christ, and that's what I'm saying to you tonight. All of these other things fade away. Jesus Christ does not, and he says, no man comes to the Father except through the Son, Jesus Christ. You must be born again. And then that metamorphosis starts taking place. Then that change from the inside out starts taking place. I will be like him because I will see him as he is. That was Ruth Graham Bell's statement. I, oh, to be like Jesus. Oh, to be like him. To walk with him. At the end of the construction, she saw a sign that said, please be patient with us under construction. And she said, I like that. So she had that put on her tombstone. And it said, thanks for being patient with me. God was doing a work in me. And now I've run the race and I fought the fight. And I go to be with the Lord, the one who called me home. So guys and gals, God has a purpose for us. He has a plan for us. He has a reason for us being on this earth. One of them is to come to know Jesus as Lord and Savior. The other is to share the message of Jesus Christ so that others can make that same decision. You may see me involved in secular activities within our community. You may see me involved with different areas uh, on a day-to-day -day basis. But one thing that you do know that you can count on is that the Word of God is going to be shared and the Word of God is going to be given and the Word of God is going to be lived. Perfectly? No, not always. But God through his Holy Spirit, is changing, rearranging, and making me the child of God that he wants me to be. And that's my prayer for you, that he's making you the child of God that you're called to be, to do the work that he's called you to do. So thanks so much for joining me tonight. Thanks for allowing us to come into your household, uh, your house this evening, and to be a part of your life. Lord willing, we will see you this Sunday morning. Service is at 9 o'clock. And 10.30, and I ask you to continue praying for New Beginnings Chapel, uh, that healing takes place in the physical and spiritually and make a difference in the community and make memories that will last a lifetime. Thanks for joining us. Good night, everybody. We love you so much. Bye-bye.